Hello guys, GLM 4.7 is here by Z.AI and I decided to try it out. And it is also compared to other models on benchmarks. And I specifically decided to test out the new model against Sonnet 4.5, which is one of my favorite daily models to use. Especially since GLM 4.7 is now free in open code, not sure for how long, but DAX from open code wants us to have fun, and we will. So I will test GLM 4.7 with the same prompts against Sonnet 4.5 on two tasks. So this is my demo Laravel project, and I will ask it to remove some links. So we'll see how it analyzes current code and knows, discovers where exactly to edit the Laravel blade files, and also I will ask it to change a few fields in the database structure, and we'll see how it goes. Specifically for Laravel projects, there's a package Laravel Boost that generate guidelines for a lot of IDEs, and open code is one of those in the list, so I will run boost install and enable open code, in addition to my typical IDEs, because I don't use open code much, to be honest. And then it should generate the guidelines agents.md for open code. And now we can actually run open code, which I had installed previously. And then in open code, we can choose GLM 4.7 model, or you can change that. So here's the list of models, recent, and you can choose others. And as it is said, it is free, at least for the time I'm shooting this video. And here's my prompt in the human language without actually specifying which file it is. I want to remove those links which come from default Laravel starter kits, but they are irrelevant for production projects. So kind of a cleanup. And let's see how GLM 4.7 thinks and what it does. Make it bigger. So it's trying to find the files in layouts, including filament, which is installed in this project. So probably the right way. So yeah, it's doing grep and found two files. Okay, I removed the links sidebar blade. And yeah, it is done in 52 seconds. If we refresh the page, are the links gone? Yes, they are. And if we take a look at code changes, this is why I run, by the way, terminals like Claude code or open code inside of cursor. I can easily switch to code review mode. So see the changes in Git. Let's close the terminal for now. And yeah, the change is pretty obvious, removed those two things. And those other changes are irrelevant. Those are system changes for AI guidelines with boost and open code. So it's done pretty well. Now let's try the same thing in Sonnet 4.5. So I run Claude code and I will switch the model, which is I'm on Opus by default, but let's switch to Sonnet for this particular experiment. And let's run the same prompt. Here's the prompt. Let's hit enter and see not only the result, but actually what it does under the hood. I actually became quite a big fan of watching LLMs in action and understanding how they process the things. Some error while reading the file, so it will read differently. Okay, so same result or roughly same result. No, I think it's identically the same result. And yeah, done in, I think, 30 seconds or so. So yeah, for the simple test, both models did well. Sonnet was twice as fast. But GLM is a cheaper model, so it's worth waiting for a while sometimes. And now I will give a more complex challenge because I noticed that in my demo project, there's a mismatch in database columns. So for quizzes, there's a column time limit, and it seems to be in minutes for how many minutes are the limit to take one quiz. But then in another database table attempts, there's a similar field time taken, which is in seconds. So this is inconsistent and it's hard to understand which are the numbers for measurement here. So I will try to fix it with this prompt. I'm showing you the prompt in Obsidian because when I paste it to open code, it will not show it in full. So basically I will ask it to add suffixes to database columns and make other related changes in the code base, which it should discover on its own. So I paste this is what I meant. It will not show the actual prompt. Now let's run and see what happens. Okay, this is relatively quick. The first like 20 to 30 seconds analyzing models, analyzing migrations, and the plan is correct. Create two migrations, update model files, and update other references. 
Okay, running make migration terminal artisan commands. Good. Now it will edit those migration files, which behind the scenes it took like 30 seconds to think about. Yeah, now it has rename column, which seems to be correct. It's running the migration. Great. Both successful. Now it's making the changes to eloquent models also successfully. So thought for like 20 seconds, but then the editing of the code is actually fast and all the code references. So this is interesting what it would actually do model factories. Okay. So it's changing time limits with appropriate numbers in the factory. So this is more realistic. Sometimes by the way, it shows all string not found in content, which I'm not sure if it's an error or just kind of a warning along the way. Oh yeah, it's kind of an error. Let me read the file again after the failed edits. So there was something failing. Okay, so it's trying again to edit that. And by the way, we're already four minutes in behind the scenes. I'm doing pauses in this video while nothing is happening on the screen. So yeah, it seems to be pretty slow. I'm not even sure what is slow, either GLM model or open code, or maybe the demand, the usage of the new model is so big at the moment because it was released only yesterday. Okay, now it found other files referencing those fields and they need to be updated. Okay, we have undefined method user. It continues with other files. So it discovered blade files to be updated. Good. Some errors again along the way, but not sure we will see the actual changes when it's done and maybe it's irrelevant. Also we have filament files to update. Good catch. Okay, so this is the change in filament files. And by the way, this code base has quite a lot of automated tests. So we will run them if GLM doesn't run them automatically. And we'll see if nothing is actually broken. Okay, also it's updating the seeder. Good. Now it's updating the test files. So this prompt seems to be even bigger than I expected. I thought it would need to change like five files or something, but it's actually more files, which is actually good. It's a pretty realistic test on a real project instead of just blind benchmark number. And by the way, now we're eight minutes in the prompt. So each operation takes quite a lot of time for GLM 4.7. Oh, and also it explains those errors. Those are diagnostic errors. So it's something with linter or probably open code syntax checker, undefined property. So yeah, I think it's not really important. It's more like warnings for the syntax. Okay, and now it's doing grab for all the references, probably searching for what it missed potentially along the way and found another test filament test to update. So this is probably a good behavior, not just one shotting blindly and showing the success instead reanalyzing and double checking. Okay. A few more changes. Another warning It's taking so long. It's 15 minutes. So I started to read Twitter by the way in the background and found out that cursor has a new release for layout and stability improvements before Christmas. So it's probably good. People were complaining quite a lot about cursor UI things. But yeah, I don't know. It found another reference to time limit. Maybe I'm spoiled with cloud code and especially I've been working with Opus over the last few days. So to me, the speed is kind of intolerable. But again, GLM 47 is cheaper. So probably it's the case of you're getting what you're paying for. And it's running the tests now, which is great. Probably final stages. I was expecting that I would have to run the tests manually, but it's great that it did. And also it's running full test suite now. Will it succeed? Yes, all the tests are passing in nine seconds. So it didn't break anything. Well done. Also now it's running Laravel Pint. All those are in the instructions in the Laravel Boost powered agents MD in this case or Cloud MD for Cloud Code. So it instructs to run tests and Laravel Pint for code formatting, which is great. And another double check for something past tests again. So for those kind of tasks, I'm pretty happy to wait. And now it's giving the result and the final time was 17 minutes. But the result seems to be successful. I was watching that in action. And we can also check visually if we go to quizzes, there are minutes here. So nothing is broken. If I start the quiz, it is loading with those minutes in the timer. So yeah, did GLM 47 deliver for such a big task? Yes, it did.
Now let's try the same for Sonnet. So here I am in Cloud Code. I have two separate actually repositories for those projects. There's exam folder and exam GLM folder and two separate databases as well. And I will paste that prompt and let's see what happens. Will it be same or roughly similar 17 minutes? I'll probably make bigger pauses for Sonnet because this video is not about Sonnet. We all know that it's good enough. So we have the plan and I will stop this video along the way when something important is happening on the screen. Okay, so it's doing the same things in new migrations for now, renaming the column. Now we're one minute in, then same changes in the eloquent models, two minutes in, and now probably the main part, all code references to those fields. So the factories also found other files like filament table, we're three minutes in now. And just in general, it's worth watching Sonnet in action because the action is happening pretty much every few seconds, something is happening. With GLM, I was actually kind of yawning and waiting for something to happen on the screen. Okay, it crossed off the updating of code references, running migrations, done, and now running the tests. And this is where often Sonnet actually fails. And as expected, we have a failed test. And what is the actual error? Okay, the error is quizzes has no column named time limit. So it left time limit somewhere. So yes, it didn't update the tests. The tests were actually old. And now it's going again to fix the tests. I'm not sure if it will make it to filament tests. We'll see. But yeah, this is the behavior of Sonnet, especially comparing to Opus. Opus doesn't do that. This is why probably it is more expensive. But quite often Sonnet is in a hurry to deliver. But then this is why you do need to have automated tests. This is probably the most reliable way to ensure and to verify that the code is good. So yeah, it's done with the test changes, seven minutes in, and it seems to be successful. There's one warning with the test, but I skipped that fix for now, and we're seven minutes in, and I think it's working on the conclusions and the final text to show. So yeah, seven minutes in, with the first test not successful, but then it fixed itself. As usual, Claude greets us with keywords like perfect and excellent. And let's actually try to test something. I go to that page, I start a quiz. So yeah, nothing is broken visually. So yeah, all in all, both models succeeded at that task, but for Sonnet, it took seven minutes, for GLM, it took 17 minutes. And this is probably the main conclusion of this video. Is GLM 4.7 good? Quite good. So that first task prompt was very simple, kind of a warm up. I was expecting that to be delivered quite quickly. But the second one was pretty heavy test with searching the code base in various places and it did deliver. So my overall verdict for now from those two experiments for GLM 4.7, if you are happy to wait for a while because it will take time, it is slower, or maybe that slowness is because of the demand currently, I'm not sure. If you test it in the future, then let me know in the comments if it's faster for you, for your cases. So if you're happy to wait, GLM 4.7, I think it's on par with Sonnet 4.5 for day-to-day -day common tasks with coding. What do you guys think? Let's discuss in the comments below. And reminder, more of my AI coding experiments are on my Substack newsletter, AI Coding Daily. I send a free newsletter issue every Wednesday with the industry news and my latest experiments. And some extra content is for premium members, paid members of that newsletter. So for example, I've shot a series of nine videos about Laravel and AI exam project. And this whole series is available for paid members, including the repository GitHub. So yeah, if you want to support my mission of doing more experiments, subscribe to paid plan of that newsletter. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.